This is a story about connections, about the connections between neurons, between different sensory systems and different parts of the brain, about making connections, communicating through gestures and expressions and language as we learn to navigate the complexities of the social world. It's about connecting with students, with teachers, even with robots to better understand the dynamic process of learning. The key word is process. In different ways, on different time scales, ranging from milliseconds to months and years, we process information. And timing is crucial. Timing is everything. And uh, it's been a neglected area w which we think can really be exploited to help us understand some of the basic ways in which information is integrated in our brains across all of these timescales. This emphasis on temporal dynamics has had practical results for children like Anthony, who was struggling with reading until he began to use the Fast for Word program at Rutgers University. It's had practical results for preschoolers at the UCSD Early Childhood Education Center, who are being taught about colors, shapes, and numbers by Ruby the social robot, Javier Movellan. We want to understand what are the problems in robotics and in machine perception that we need to be solved so that we have a robot that can assist teachers in the classroom environment. Now, one of the things that uh, we realize is the critical importance of timing. When you get the timing right, you get magic between the children and the robot, right? And Disney knew this very well, right? It's about time. And, but when you don't get it right, that magic completely disappears. This is the Preuss School for low-income students on the UCSD campus. 56% of the student population is Hispanic, 14% African American, and 20% Asian. This class is working on designs to help Ruby move about. The Preuss School is, is a very unique school to be able to work in this manner with researchers because we are uh, indeed a laboratory. So uh, we are very interested in learning as much as we can about preparing students to be learners. The Preuss students are part of the future science and engineering workforce. Echoing the recent National Academy of Sciences report, Frieda Seibli, dean of UCSD's Jacobs School of Engineering, is concerned that the US's connection to the global workforce is threatened. Unless we make some really fundamental changes in how we approach engineering and science, and in particular the learning of science and engineering, we will very lo quickly lose the connection. One potential remedy is the creation of a new kind of learning center, organized as a connected network of networks to study perceptual expertise, social interaction, interacting memory systems, and sensory motor learning, together with shared cross-cutting resources. The Perceptual Expertise Network, centered at Vanderbilt University, provides the model. The, the success of the Perceptual Expertise Network for the last five years is really a proof of concept for the sort of structure that we want to create in this center. Um, when the Perceptual Expertise Group decided that we wanted to attack new ideas, bigger problems, such as uh, looking at the temporal dynamics of perceptual expertise, it was clear to us that we needed to hook up with more people. However, it seems like it would be a mistake for us to simply triple the number of people in the group um, without a real structure to manage our interactions. And that's what the network of networks will allow. It's just amazing to be able to uh, learn not only from my advisor, but from people who have very different ways of thinking about the same question. And I guess that's what a network is supposed to be. Key to the collaborative design of the center are the cross-cutting resources. At the Motion Capture Facility, Emo Todorov and Howard Poisner are exploring a number of virtual reality tasks. At the Brain Dynamics Facility, Marty Sereno can then help Todorov and Poisner image reaching and hand movements and with Scott McKay, integrate the results in time and space. So functional MRI is an example of a technique that has very good spatial resolution but not very good temporal resolution, whereas 
EEG and MEG have very good temporal resolution, but it's, it's more difficult using those signals alone to try to localize where, where, where they've actually come from. And so we would like to, in the center, to, to really try to bring space and time together. The benefits of these facilities extend to the entire network of networks. Take just one example. Dan Feldman's lab, part of the sensory motor network, studies synaptic plasticity rules. Timing from milliseconds to seconds to even minutes is critical for driving plasticity at synapses in the brain. And we want to apply this knowledge to figuring out how timing is controlling learning in the behavioral level and hopefully to use that knowledge to improve strategies for teaching and education. And one of the discoveries we've made in the last five years is that fast learning that occurs in the cortex is using the same principle of temporal difference learning that is being used for classical conditioning uh, in order to be able to predict future reward. This is a great surprise, but I think it's a unifying principle that will be very important for the future and especially for getting uh, students in the classroom to remember things. These and other fruitful collaborations all generate enormous amounts of data. Management of these shared data collections, the GRID, centers on the San Diego Supercomputer Center on the UCSD campus. GRID pioneer Reagan Moore will partner with psychologist Mark Applebaum an expert in data management and analysis. Here at UCSD we have facilities that just don't exist anywhere else. We have people that have pioneered the grid approach to data integration. The data sharing facility takes the load off the investigators. We're the glue that lets them work together in an efficient manner. We're the glue that brings together the technical parts of the project, of the inquiry that we're doing. We're the part that facilitates the management of the project. In fact, there's another crucial partner in the smooth management of the center, the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology, or CalIT2. As a kind of incubator for projects, CalIT2 will provide infrastructure, administrative support, and a future home for the center. Ramesh Rao is director of the UCSD division of CalIT2. Researchers who have in the past uh, had to put together complex teams uh, have sometimes had the science figured out in their mind, but have had difficulty putting together the administrative structure to make it succeed. CalIT2 positions them to succeed by taking some of that burden off their hands. Institutional leaders are eagerly anticipating the center. UCSD Division of Social Sciences Associate Dean Jeff Ellman. I've watched this group over six months. I've seen them develop the proposal. Uh, this, is, this is a group uh, in which the whole is greater than uh, the parts. Uh, it, it, it has a coherent philosophy, a work style, uh, which I think will really result in doing things that could not be done individually. Creating a science of learning center with our colleagues from Rutgers and from Vanderbilt is really an exciting development that's consistent with the mission and vision for this campus. We have the number one neuroscience program in the country. We have the San Diego Supercomputer Center, which is probably unique in being able to handle the large data sets that will be generated by basic research. It will be a wonderful interdisciplinary center here. We are confident that we can translate what we've already learned about the brain and about learning into the classroom. And I'd be very, very disappointed if we couldn't do at least that. But I think we can do a lot more. I think that we could transform the way the research is actually done by understanding in a real classroom setting how children interact with teachers and use that to help inform our science. Ultimately, of course, what counts is the quality of the science. A center consisting of a network of networks and focused on the temporal dynamics of learning is a unique vision that promises unique results. For the Science Network, I'm Roger Bingham.